effects and better tolerance to chemotherapy. Yet the problem is the later consequences of chemotherapy. Once damaged, mitochondrial DNA is no longer reparable. Defects can build up over the course of years. This cannot be calculated on an individual basis. Based on a long-term study in the German Cancer Center, the average survival period for cancer patients after chemotherapy amounts to 3.5 years, without chemotherapy 12 years. The finding dates back more than a decade, but not much has improved in the meantime in regard to survival odds with most solid carcinomas. In the USA the war against cancer declared in 1971 was considered lost in 1996. Ron plus Zeit. What is your advice for those affected? Creamer. For those affected and their family members as well as those not yet affected, since every third human being will be diagnosed with cancer during the course of his life, the only advice is not to be driven into panic by the shock of diagnosis. Rather adapt to the basic knowledge about why cancer cells are not foreign bodies but reactions programmed by the evolutionary biology of our cell symbiosis that can be reversed in principle if one consistently gives the body what it really needs. Obviously at the end of the day the informed patient can only decide in cooperation with enlightened therapists if he has the necessary mental support. Ron plus Zeit will surely publish addresses of individual therapists, counseling organizations, patient initiatives, and internet addresses that already have experiences with biological compensation therapy. Related seminars for those affected and therapists are also offered at the Wilfrids Hauser Academy. In view of the more than 100 different forms of cancer, there are too many special questions that one can only discuss in individual counseling or in therapy seminars. Ron plus Zeit. What are the consequences for the causes, diagnosis, and therapy in case of HIV slash AIDS? Creamer. The crucial thing is the knowledge that the T4 helper immune cells in the blood are not destroyed by some sort of virus, neither by HIV nor by another virus, and that the cellular immunity is capable of recovery. Since the outset of the 1990s, it has been proven in human beings that there are two subgroups of T4 cells. As with all mammals, these are not differentiated in laboratory measurements by HIV slash AIDS researchers, yet the T4 cells count in the bloodstream is determined by the relationship of these two subgroups called Th1 and Th2. Dominant Th2 cells are formed by lack of cystin and glutathione. They have migrated from the bloodstream and stimulate antibody production in the lymph organs. The number of these T4 cells in the bloodstream declines automatically. This produces cytotoxic no defense gas as Th1 cells against cells that contain pathogens internally. This switch in the T4 cell balance, as in the case of cancer cell transformation, is regulated by type 2 cytokine. If it is lasting, it causes the disposition for AIDS. As has been proved, the really endangered among the HIV positives have type 2 cytokine dominance. This also applies for the dual strategy of immune defense in the cell's interior and in their outer environs. The same programmed evolutionary biology laws of counter-regulation prevail when lacking freely convertible protons as they do with cancer. Since most therapists do not seem aware of these laws or do not want to know about them, sooner or later they unintentionally kill those stigmatized as HIV positive, even those not even primarily endangered by AIDS. This occurs because they measure neither the cystin and glutathione levels nor other important laboratory parameters. Instead they prescribe unlimited glutathione consuming chemotherapy and chemoantibiotics toxic to mitochondria, or if they do make measurements, the HIV fixation prompts them to carry out chemo treatment anyway. A minority resorts to a lazy compromise, treating simultaneously with a half-hearted supplemental therapy using L-cystin or reduced glutathione. But in 
the long run this cannot compensate for the counterproductive toxic effect of the chemo substances. Wrong plus zite. But what happens in the organism of the HIV positives who feel better subjectively after beginning the cocktail therapy? Creamer. This is the so-called lawnmower effect, the most frequent. Opportunistic pathogens, fungi and protozoa also possess mitochondria, whose respiration chain is inhibited by Asden septum. But this effect should not be confused with a fictitious HIV inhibition. The crucial point is that individual fungi and protozoa can survive the chemotherapeutic target attack just as individual cancer cells can survive by counter-regulation. That is the so-called resistance problem. The real basic evil is that the lack of glutathione and the reduced production of no defense gas dependent on it are not in balance. Thus the body refuses the surviving means of self-help. Instead, the deficient state resulting from the chemotherapy intensifies and counter-regulated resistant parasites and cancer cells are bred. The detoxifying role of the mitochondria in the immune and non-immune cells is forcefully weakened even more until reaching the point of critical stress, hence extending survival of the so-called inevitably fatal infection really reflects an error in therapeutic approach that maintains the conditions of the vicious clinical circle. Several clinical course studies in the USA in the meantime have confirmed that precisely those patients die whose alleged viral load, measured by the extremely dubious PCR method in this case, was lowered by combined therapy. This was seemingly confirmed by the relative increase in T4 cells within the blood serum. The relative increase in T4 cells is based on the reverse current of Th2 cells that can no longer carry out their helper function for cells producing antibodies, since their maturity is blocked by chemotherapy. The alleged decrease in HIV RNA is the result of increased RNA consumption from the serum for DNA repair by genes made defective by the chemo treatment. Therefore, viewed over the long term, these are therapeutic pseudo-successes that deceive both patients and therapists about the favorable effects of chemotherapy and chemoantibiotics. Without consistent compensation therapy, it is merely a question of the patient's disposition how long it takes before the point of no return is reached as a result of long-term chemotherapeutic poisoning of respiration in the immune and non-immune cells. But the time fuse effects should also be taken very seriously among HIV positive patients who have taken long-term Asden septum, for instance, then distance themselves from it at the critical point, live healthily a few years, and suddenly develop fatal organ failure, heart attack, ventricle failure, sepsis, brain, or liver coma, etc. These events have nothing to do with HIV, even if HIV slash AIDS physicians suggest it. Rather they concern late vascular symptoms of chemotherapy irreparable mitochondrial DNA defects resulting from absolutely contraindicated anti-HIV medication and long-term anti-AIDS prophylaxis. Several orthodox HIV slash AIDS research groups in the USA have published that the proven damage to mitochondrial DNA after combined therapy resemble intense inborn mitochondrial DNA damage. We have known for a long time that this damage can accumulate and build up after continued division of the mitochondria and added stress that cell respiration fails and that fatal organ failures can appear in tissues and organs with abundant mitochondria or in case of cellular counter-regulation, cancer, transformation. It is crucial that those affected be told how one must check this danger and can compensate for it with biological non-toxic means this applies regardless of whether primary risks have led to the HIV positive test effect. However those affected are particularly hepatitis patients, whereby the hepatitis C diagnosis is just as false as HIV, but an autoimmune hepatitis can emerge.